Not try this at home, school, or anywhere. So the shade's better on this side anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for coming out to Renaissance Park today. I am. Your Wrestle Club, the Tango Bowl champion, the outlaw, Rusty Livings, and I will be your ring announcer for this afternoon. Are you ready to have some fun today? That's what I like to hear. So before we get started, I'd just like to say a few things. What we do in the ring is real. The falls, the crashes, the bloody noses, the bumps and the bruises, everything is real. So we please ask that you don't try this at home. <laughs> On top of all of that, we have a Roku channel where you can find Wrestle Club 24-7, a YouTube channel, we have a Facebook page that's always up to date with current events and things going on behind the Wrestle Club curtain. Make sure you follow us. If you take any pictures, if you take any videos, if you do like what you see, we ask that you share it to any of your social media outlets and please tag Wrestle Club. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. Sir, we appreciate your service. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. There you go, that's what I like to hear. So let's start with our first match. An intergender match. Coming to the ring. Weighing in. Well, that part's not important. <laughs> coming to the ring first. She is from Sun Valley, Idaho. She is the hidden gem, Kiki Starling! Welcome everybody to Wrestle Club once again, episode 21, and we have a very special announcer, and speaking of special, what's hey, up, West? Hey, hey, welcome, well, uh, hello everybody. As you, you can tell, I am obviously back. I've been gone for a little while there. Apparently, when you talk about business, payroll, and whatnot, uh, our Lord and Master Patrick Holloway doesn't seem to appreciate that too much. For about the past two years, today she's got probably her biggest test on the line because making his way to the ring at this time, all the way from Basra, Iraq, he is the Arabian Nightmare, Salim Abbas! And making his way out here is the Arab Nightmare, Salim Abbas, and today is June 29th, and this is The Forge. What, what is The Forge, West? Well, The Forge is more or less a private event venue that you wish, that if you wish to have Wrestle Club show up and put on a show for you, you would just need to reach out to us via our Facebook page, and then you can actually speak to the owner, Patrick Holloway, through that. He'll help get everything put into place, and then if you got a venue for us, we'll come out there, we'll put on a show for you. Again, it's private, so that does mean that it is something that has a cost to it, but yes, that is what The Forge is. And any opportunity that Wrestle Club has, they will take it, and today is the Forge and Make-A-Wish Foundation. And right now, we're about to watch a Make-A-Wish Foundation happen as Kiki Starling goes off Salima Boss and our one of our very first, or I should say second, look at intergender match, isn't it? Yes, sir, and Salima Boss has that side headlock on Kiki Starling, and right now, he's just, what is he doing? He's marching around displaying his powers. I mean, 
Let's be pretty honest with you here. If you're gonna get in there with the ring with another guy, you gotta be expected to get treated as such and slam a oh, oh, Did you see that face plant? I am seeing that face plant, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Salim Abbas showing that if you're gonna get in the ring with me, I'm gonna treat you like an evil whether you like it or not. Oh, hey! And Kiki Starling still has some fight left in her. She hits the ropes. Oh, ducks that one. And Salima Boss got caught. This is that clothesline, and that's a full Nelson right there. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what? That's some sneaky underhanded tactics there from, uh, from Kiki Starling going for what looked like a full Nelson. And now she's riding him on the back with a sleeper hold. That is a chokehold. A great chokehold here, Rob. I think uh, Salima Boss might be tapping out or going to sleep here. Oh, right, my God, yeah, I'm really surprised the ref did not break that up. That was a blatant chokehold by Kiki Starling, the coward. That was a weird, weird naked chokehold textbook. Maneuver here. I don't care if it's tech book or not. You're cutting the man's airway off. You still have to be stopped, and that's what the rest should be doing right now. And she's going right back to it. It's not a sleeper hold. Very smart by Kiki Starling, and referee Corhe might be calling this one as the mid boss might be tapping out. Oh, no, and Slim Boss just had his fingers in the eyes of Kiki Starling there. I think he was more or less tapping her skull with the fingers at that point in time. That's what it looked like to me. And Slim Boss wisely taking an option to get out of that sugar naked no, chokehold, which is still illegal, by the way. You cut off a man's airway, that's illegal whether you like it or not there, G. So you, you're telling me that you can poke someone's eye out and that's illegal? Yeah, you see what you see. I see Slim Boss nailing uh, Kiki Starling with a fist to the head. That was a double fist combo there. A nice little flog into the noggin is what we saw there. The kick out of two from Kiki Starling. And Kiki Starling is still in this matchup. She has plenty of life left. Yeah, plenty of life, which is probably not a wise idea. Salim Abbas, the Arabian Nightmare, stomping on Kiki's back, letting her know, once again, you're in the ring with me. You're going to find out real quick. I will not show you, show you any special favors. And this one might be over. Uh, Salim Abbas was going for that camel clutch. He has put away so many opponents with that camel clutch. And right now, Kiki starting has the boss. Ooh, ooh, nice little, uh, I believe that's also known as a diamond cutter style attack there. I can't, I can't remember what the name of the diamond does. That's actually what it's referred to as. Yeah, she came off from that corner and hits the human boss. And the crowd here is behind Kiki starting 100% here. No, that's the wrong person to be behind. Kiki Starling, I'm not gonna lie to you. She's uh, she's taking a lot of cheap tactics here. I don't care what you say. Kicking a guy in the back of his leg like that, that's not cool, man. And she is waiting for Slim the Boss. Yeah! Big rope, but Slim the Boss rolled through. She was going for that cross body. And here is where the difference in an intergender match you see. This is raw power. Slim the Boss displaying it with a backbreaker front slam combo. And Kiki Starling dumb enough to kick out of something like that. I have never seen a move like that. That was very impressive by Salima Boss. Wisely using his strength to his advantage. And I mean, in an intergender match, that's the thing you have to understand. Like, well, sure, the women can get, uh, can hang with the men. Oh, oh, that was a nice variation of what looked like a single layered code breaker. And, oh, Salima Boss had his foot on the rope. So that, was that a three count? No, uh, I think that was a three count, but I think the ref uh, wised up and realized maybe he's not as blind as he looks that that foot was on the rope and Salima Boss the veteran here in this matchup wisely putting that leg on that bottom rope that's just years of experience right there though Kiki Starling should have actually hooked the other leg not the one she was on that honestly was what costed her the match here or at least costed her that pinfall and Kiki Starling is on the mid rope once again she was going for that cross body but she misses nobody home and oh. Nobody home. I, I beg the difference. Somebody was absolutely too. Uh, oh, oh, looks so like Slim Boss was trying to cheat one out of Kiki Starling, but referee Corhe, one of the best refs here, caught him. <laughs> you say that was not fair. I say that totally was. Eye for an eye. She choked him earlier. I think that was totally fair in Slim Boss. Well, Slim Boss better get his eyes on the prize. Kiki Starling two. Oh, and a kick out of two from Slim Boss. Kiki Starling not having all of her weight on the shoulders there. Yeah, she went for that schoolboy, but didn't get three. She has Slim and Boss in the corner here. Where is she going for here? Oh, nice little handstand into what looks like a variation of a monkey flip, neutral toss with the legs. Heads to take over. 
Um, you name it what you want, but that was still pretty impressive. And she might be going for that kiki stretch. And oh, oh, oh I'm pretty sure she does yoga. Oh, oh how do you deal with that? Oh, oh, look at Selena. She has the the ankles of Selima Boss, and Selima Boss is tangled up here. I think somebody needs. I think somebody needs to call. How do you tap out from that? I don't think you can. I think you have to say I quit. And I kind of think that may have what happened. Or Selima Boss might have got out of it. It looks like he did. How did he get out of that? That would have quit. I know I would have been saying it. At that point in time, hard to save right now. We've got a double count, though, as both men, uh, both, I'm sorry, both wrestlers are down. And we are, who's going to get up first here? Kiki Starling kind of feeling it. I guess that stretching yoga or not, you still feel it when you bend over backwards over some guy's head, jamming into your spine like Selima Boss was. And quite the matchup so far. Here comes Kiki Starling. Oh, oh. And she just got planted in the corner there. Kiki Starling being told to get back in her corner. Selima Boss just slams her down into it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where are we going from here? Top rope here. High risk. Top Nothing ever right. good comes off the top rope. Yeah. You know, I will say though, yeah. right here, G, this is where I have a lot of respect for no. Starling for the fact that she's in there with one of the meaner guys of Russell Club. Yeah. And here comes oh. Kiki Starling. Oh, oh, very nice. Way to counter to a uh, hesitant takeover there. All right, credit where it's due. Kiki Starling wrestling with Salima Boss and going toe to toe is impressive. However, a sooner or later, that power and size advantage is still going to play in favor of Boss again. Yeah. Here comes Kiki Starling. Ooh, and another breaker on Salim Abbas. I think Salim Abbas feeling that, and he's quickly getting to his feet, getting into the corner. And Kiki starting is sizing up Salim Abbas. She's gonna go for another one here. Oh, and that is a double time. Uh, that might be three, one, two, three. Oh, that was, that, was that, that was a three count. That was a three count. I will say it right there. I think that was a three count. And Rusty Livings is walking towards the ring, staying in the two. It is a three count. And your winner here is Akiki Starling pulling off all the stunts here for the Forge. Yeah, but look at that though. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, she had to use multiple dirty-handed tricks to get the victory on Selena Boss in order to take the upper hand on him. I was talking about the size and power difference. Akiki Starling using her size to her advantage and then knocking Selena Boss's teeth in with those knees. That is not legal, my friend. Well, I give both wrestlers credit as it's over 100 degrees here, and the summer of Idaho is always what did you hot. Think about oh, that your is first very court. true. Yeah. Oh. Now, real quick, before we move on with today's main event, once again, we would appreciate if you would follow us on Facebook. Any pictures, any videos, anything that you capture with your cell phone, please share with us. We love to see all fans' interactions with the Wrestle Club. But more importantly, today, we are here in Renaissance Park to celebrate our friend Isaac. We appreciate you having us here today, and we thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to put on a show for you. Having said that, are you ready for today's main event? Now, I say this every time, the louder you cheer, the bigger the moves get. So this is your last chance for some adrenaline and to raise your voices and to uncross your arms and take them out of your pockets. I'm watching you. Okay. Ooh, hold up. I'm gonna ask you one more time. I need you to reach way down from deep inside and let them in the tent hear it as loud as you can. Are you ready for today's main event? up the crowd here at the forge and you know I'm not gonna lie to you the thing about the forge I like the most is this is where you get like you folks at home will get to see one-on-one -on -one what these wrestlers go through they will do it whether it's rain snow sunshine whatever you have you these guys will put their bodies on the line for you and the forge is no exception and we're on to our next match with King our Lord, our Savior, and we're also representing one half of the tag team titles. Best when did this happen? Uh, the last episode? Did you not watch it? Dude, I was suspended. But you can still watch the episodes on YouTube, Facebook, Roku, literally almost everywhere. That's that's what's so good about Wrestle Club. That's very true. We are available wherever you are. Our King, our Lord, our Savior, proudly representing 10 pounds of gold once again.
I am happy to see this. I think you just had way too much coffee today, West. Uh, there's no denying that. There may be something in this bottle right here. Are you ready to bring out the heavyweight champion of Idaho? Are you ready? Fresh from Snake River, I give you the Lost Soul Caribou! And going on strong for a year and a half with the Wrestle Club Heavyweight title, our Lost Soul Caribou coming to the ring from the Snake River of Idaho. And, uh, you know, you guys seen the stories there, too. This man is no stranger to the uh, paranormal being summoned from hell, if you remember correctly. Yeah, I don't know where and how he got that from. <laughs> well, you know, as uh, we don't question the antics of certain people in the Wrestle Club or the fact that, you know, Patrick Holloway managed to bring about our current heavyweight champion to help him get out of H.E. double hockey sticks. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Lost Soul Garibay, year and a half strong. I think he's got the record right now for the heavyweight title. So we have uh, quite the matchup, a uh, champion versus champion. I had two former, uh, two, uh, not just that, two champions on their uh, third champion. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 what? It's you and me. Come on now. All right, all right, all right. Come on, boy. Nope. Got it. I mean, I tried to do the best that I could ring announcing. You did a great job, by the way. And hey, did you do a great job? You know, each and every week you come out here and you issue an open challenge for that potato bowl belt. That's right, and that's right. That's a job. There's a job that's never too small for you. And that's something that I appreciate. So today, official, Mr. Jorge, I want to make this a triple threat match for the heavyweight title because he deserves a shot. I appreciate the offer. And I would love to shake your hand. But I think we should leave it up to the fans. You guys want him in the match? I believe it's on. I believe it's on. Is this is this for a title or is this just for? This is for the heavyweight title. Oh, holy shnikes on that one! And Corhe has a lot of gold in his hands right now. Well, I'm pretty sure Corhe's arms are gonna fall off with all 30 pounds of gold there. And so just like that, we have a triple threat for the heavyweight championship here at the Forge Make a Wish event for Boise, Idaho. <laughs> this is gonna be a match. You don't want to miss this one, folks. Holy shit. Nobody sees one of the bigger events, but now one of our private venues is having this. It just goes to tell you that, once again, like I said before, Wrestle Club doesn't follow the rules. We'll do whatever we want because the fans ask us to do it. Yeah, this is quite the main event here. You want me? And there you see a handshake there between the snake and the outlaw, and the key wants a handshake. You know what? I'll be pretty honest with you, Marcus. You don't want to shake that crook's hand. It's, he's, he's probably had that in a dumpster somewhere trying to dig out that title. And I don't think the heavyweight champion wants to shake the hand of the King Marcus Anderson. Now that's disrespect at its finest. That is one former champion trying to shake the hand of a current champion. Uncool on Muscle Garrett by Marcus Anderson not having any over double line. And missing. Yeah! And here we go. Double oh, hip toss there. And oh god, I feel so oh. the, the king, and there's a double single leg drop kick. Wow. Uh, right there, you can already see the alliance that is formed. But I'll be honest with you, that's the thing about a triple threat. Alliance is formed, but they can easily dissolve just like that. And it looks like that is already the case as Marcus, our lord, has been removed from the equation for a minute. And now we have the Idaho Potato Bolt champion taking on the heavyweight champion. And the outlaw has that arm ring wrenched. You know, I just had the scariest thought in the world as Garibay's rolling through and taking the arm right there. Can you imagine Rusty Levins with both titles? Oh, no, no thank you, pass. The King Marcus Anderson can have both titles too. And I hope that happens because at least we'll be underneath proper rule of care. And the outlaw right now is oh, just reaching a headlock there. Showing that once again he's a dirty handed uh, dog himself as he first basically just got shoved off and then barreled over Lost Soul Garibay. And here comes the outlaw off that rope, off it again. The Lucha pass there. And the heavyweight champion come with that back elbow. Garibay hitting it right as Mark going with that diving clothesline followed up afterwards. We might be seeing right here. Yeah, we are going to see Garibay. He is the best fans. Which one wants the trash? He wants the 
it looks like that one got it. Oh. See, the outlaw just got body slammed right now. Garibai sizing up his opponents, and this is what makes Garibai so absolutely dangerous. Oh, speaking of dangerous, King Marcus Anderson just took the legs out of the outlaw, and oh, the, former, the former tag team Royal Inc. has been officially closed and signed off on as Marcus Anderson beating on Garibai from behind. I believe the heavyweight champion was trying to check on the outlaw there. <laughs> Honestly, that was, a, that was a mistake of Garibai. This is a triple threat match. You need to have your head on a swivel at all times. Yeah, but that's the friend of the snake. And here comes King Marcus Anderson. Big back elbow there. A snake and a dog and a royal king. So I think the king has got the best bet here. Marcus Anderson hitting that perfect snap. Nice pinfall there. He went straight for that pinfall. Didn't waste any time. No time at all. He got both shoulders down. Something right there that we have always talk about is that when you get the shoulders down, it shows you're meaning business. Marcus Anderson displaying his strength by picking Garibay up in a fire air. What is he doing? Is he squatting right now? Hey, sometimes you need to get your workouts in before you drop a man on the top rope. And right now, uh, the snake is up and over. Now, here's the thing about triple threat fans. It doesn't have to be... Oh, gosh. Rusty Lickens, the dog here with a uh, high leg, and then hit Marcus with a line, but Marcus just oh, no, off. Back there. Oh, and that took him off his feet. Well, another high leg. He's going for a quick count. Two and count. Two count there, and... Man, both of these men can wind up the heavyweight champion. And that's exactly what I was just about to state there before the action picked up there. It doesn't matter if Garibay gets pinned. As long as somebody gets pinned, Garibay can lose that title. So if the champion does not have to be pinned in this match? That is correct. In a triple threat match, the champion does not have to be pinned. Oh, and what's the is going for that high leg going to be caught into a spinning belly to back. Scott wisely by our king, our savior. Now you see the power of the king, Marcus Anderson. One, two. That's a two and a half. Uh, the snake just saved his title right there. Almost had a new champion crowned and regally crowned as it is. Is Garibay going for Oh, no. No. Oh, he just dumped him. Core going for the pin. That was a pin. That was a front suplex. King Marcus Anderson onto the outlaw. And, oh. I almost thought Garibay had that. I'm surprised Outlaw actually managed to uh, muster up the strength to get out after having the King slam on top of him. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Outlaw looks like as the snake here. It looks like he's going for that roll of the dice. And, oh, oh God. It's actually a diving re uh, reverse DDT. Yeah, inverted DDT. I mean, that's only a two and a half there. As you can see right there, all three men showing the frustrations. Marcus, the Garibay nearly having it. And now Rusty Livings, you gotta imagine the frustration going through all three men's minds. People want that title, and Marcus Anderson quickly deciding he's gonna kick Garibay out of the equation. These guys better look in that corner because the outlaw's up and high. Uh -oh. And he might be coming up here. Oh, a cross body on both men. One, two. Ooh, Rusty Livings going for the pin on Garibay, the quickest man that is there for his options. And, and what is, he's trying to be pin both men right now. Wait. What is Corey saying? Corey saying you can't do it. Why can't he do that? Corey totally could. It's a triple threat. And uh, I believe Corey says you, you can't pin both. Uh, to my knowledge, you can. As long as both men are down on the ground, it's not illegal. You totally could pin both. They're now kind of confused. The outlaws, uh, the outlaws asking the fans here, like, hey, right? I had that in the in the bucket. Well, I am not gonna lie to you on that one. Corey, I think not realizing that you really could do that. Marcus and Carabai dissolve into a fight on the outside. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, they're on their knees right here. It doesn't matter if they're standing or on their knees or on the ground. They're, st they're still gonna fight. That man, right there, Russell Livings has got a sized up for a, ooh, a suicide time. And now all three guys are down and now we got a, a car crash here in, in Boise. That's, no, that's nothing new for Boise. In any case, though, we have ourselves with uh, what looks like a human wreckage out there with uh, basically all of us living being behind the wheel. See, that's exactly the reason why the guy needs to stay in behind the bars, is that that man is nothing but a liability. So uh, what happens if they get counted out? They get counted out. It's the same rules as the standard count out. No new champion. It's, it's, uh, if all three are outside the rings, it's a draw. If it's uh, 
if uh, one of the guys gets the side of the ring count still goes, then it's that guy wins, but there's no new champion. And here comes the outlaw, missing that double close line there. Oh, and I think we're now about to see an alliance between Marcus and Garibay. And then I think the friendships are over right now. And throw I'm yourself at everyone down. else. I'm 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 down. Down. You drop him right now. Oh my gosh. Are they, they gonna drop, drop the outlaw? Oh, the outlaw's been out there for a while. Uh, they're probably making a uh, probably making a regret the decision of dying on the all that same way. time. It'd probably get, get some blood going in that brain. <laughs> and the outlaw is out. Uh, this is this right here though, this is exactly what Marcus Anderson needs. He needs to get Outlaw out so he can take the title off Garibay. And uh, Garibay's pay attention to the Outlaw. Once oh. again, he's gonna pay for it right there. Belly to belly suplex by our king. Four to the pin, three count. Oh, no, oh, two Cor count. Yep, Corhey says two and a half. Two and a half, two and three quarters. It would have been three and four was faster. Well, I think the king uh, didn't hook the leg on that one too. I think Cor is just too slow. What is uh -oh. He has the, the heavyweight championship belt here. Now here's the thing about a triple threat, unless it's specifically stated, that can be a lie. And the outlaw's trying to stop. Oh, he just kicked. Cord, yeah, Cord just kicked it. One, two, three. That's a three count. Yeah, that's a three count. And just like that, the heavyweight champion retains here. Are you the, serious? The Jorge Are you the serious? Belt. Jorge kicked the belt out of Marcus and Rusty's hands. Well, I mean, the belt is illegal. I mean, it's not supposed to be in the ring. Well, I mean, your decision on that one, triple, triple threat rule is if it's a triple threat match, the belt actually would have been legal in this situation. But Wesley Living not having any of that because he plays by the rules, quote unquote, that, you know, he's not going to allow Marcus Anderson to hit Garibay with that title. And just like that, in a blink of an eye, this match is over. But that's exactly how a triple threat can happen here, G. It can end on a win. It doesn't matter who gets the pinfall. But in this situation, it was Garibay, so he retains, and he once again continues, continues to push that record of a year and a half. I lost count of how many days, but he pushes it out further. And the outlaw and the law so are celebrating here at the Forge. Well, you know what? That's uh, that's that's really nice that you can sometimes put friendship back on the line after you guys pretty much beat the crap out of each other. You ask me, I would have socked Outlaw West Living for deciding to use himself as a human torpedo on my face. And what is this, a crap off? I think this is them just saying thank you for coming and we're gonna embarrass ourselves some further. What are you talking about? Russell Club is doing a great thing today. Make a wish. And they just granted a wish today. They did grant a wish today. My wish was seeing Outlaw uh, 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 Russell Living get his face beaten in, but that didn't happen. So I my thought, wish got denied. I thought your wish was to have the king win. Well, you know, ultimately, if our Lord and Savior gets the victory, sure. But Outlaw as well, I mean. And right now, the outlaw is thanking all the fans here. Uh, Wrestle Club only had a, two days to prep for this, so I give all the wrestlers and the referee, Corhe, give him some props. You know what? That's one thing I'll say right there. I agree with you, G. For the fact that with almost no time to prepare, these men and women come out here and put their bodies on the line. That tells you. That's dedication, devotion, love. Everything they have for their friends. Everything they have for their friends. While I myself might sound like kind of a jerk, I'll be honest with you, I'll give credit where credit is due. And in this situation, the credit is due to all Wrestle Club for the love and care that they bring to this community. I mean, you talk about, you know, granting a wish. I mean professional wrestling, I mean, who would want him, I guess, the wish to be a pro, pro wrestling match? You know what? This fan right here, he's getting a pro wrestling match. And uh, the shirt is off, might be coming in the ring here. I think he came in and got a photo. And we see uh, a few pictures here at The Forge, Make a Wish, and we want to thank Make a Wish Foundation for reaching out to Wrestle Club and having this private event. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time around. This is episode 21. Yep, episode 21. And we want to thank all the wrestlers that attended today.